Hello, 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 coaches. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Maximize Your Monday. Listen, it is your vision coach, Latoya Early. I am also the founder of Chase Gray University. We are a niche coaching certification company for Christian women. I am, I believe that we are demonstrating kingdom coaching. I believe that we are demonstrating kingdom coaching. A lot of times, you know, we get wrapped up in um, this structure of secular coaching and the validation of secular coaching. And I believe that God has called me to um, create or to demonstrate kingdom coaching and what that looks like, right? Through Chase Great University. We certify our coaches in your coaching niche, helping you to truly establish yourself as a expert so that not only you can be seen as an expert so that you can be known as an expert but so that you can also be paid like an expert here at chase gray university we help you mature the gift of coaching we help you develop the skill of coaching and grow the business of coaching those three different elements when working simultaneously not only provokes high income but it also provokes high impact. So listen, welcome to Maximize Your Monday, the masterclass. I just recently start calling or just added the masterclass piece um, to Maximize Your Monday because I want you to know that the Maximize Your Monday segments here in my six-figure group are important. Um, we've taken the time out, <coughs> excuse me, to provide you strategy on how to grow your coaching business. And so we want to make sure that we are providing you um, what you need so that you can not only grow as a kingdom coach, but so that you can grow your kingdom business. Cool. So do me a favor. If you have not already, introduce yourself inside of the comments so that we can know that you are here, so that we can share who you are. Make sure you share what type of coach you are. Make sure you let us know um, what type of coach you are, whether or not you are aspiring or if you are growing. I'm going to give you guys two seconds to jump in so that you can let us know who's here in the community. So listen, I hope that you are just as excited um, as I am about Maximize Your Monday and the Masterclass. Listen, we are here to really share with you strategies on growing your kingdom business as a kingdom coach. So we're going to talk about marketing today. OK, so let me know in the comments if you feel that um, marketing is one of your uh, is one of the areas that you struggle with most. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if marketing is an area that you feel that you struggle with most, whether or not it's marketing yourself on social media. Maybe it's, you know, creating opportunities for people to know who you are as a coach. Let me know if marketing is one of your areas that you struggle with most let me know inside of the comments so here here's the thing about the maximize your monday master classes these master classes are designed for you and so i want to make sure that as you are joining us and you're um you're joining us um during the class that you're interacting with us that you're engaging with us so that i can make sure that i'm providing you content and information that you truly need i love it thank you so much athena um the mindset transformation coach from San Francisco. I love it. I love it. I love it. I told you, um, we're, I'm going to travel. I'm going to get to San Francisco one day. And y'all, listen, the only reason why I want to go is because my childhood um, TV show, Full House, they just made it look so amazing, right? Um, so thank you so much for rocking out with us today, Athena. I see that Brandy um, also stated, yes, marketing. Marketing is an area um, that you can definitely use more support in. I love it. Is there anyone else? Let me know in the comments if marketing is an area where you can use more support. I want to know. I want to hear from you. Um, I want to hear from you and I want to know whether or not marketing is an area that you feel that you need more support. Now, here's why I'm asking this question, because I can remember when I first started 
You're so welcome, Athena, Coach Athena. Um, I can remember when I first started my business, I was crying, y'all, literal tears. Like, Lord, I need someone who can come in and help me with the marketing piece of Chase Gray. I need someone who can help me, who can come in and help me market the business, right? And so I very um, clearly remember him sitting me down and saying, it's not a marketing thing. It's a messaging thing right? It's not a marketing issue that you're having. It's a messaging issue that you're having. And I'm saying, you know, well, what does that mean? And how do I correct it? What are some things that I can do so that I can correct this marketing issue that I'm having because I'm struggling, right? I'm struggling with, um, I'm struggling with really positioning myself as the expert. I'm struggling with really positioning myself as um, the, the person that can solve this specific problem. I was having a hard time getting the clients, you know, that I, I knew that I could serve. It wasn't just because I wasn't clear on my specific ideal client, but it had a lot to do with my messaging, right? It had a lot to do um, with my messaging. I love it. So I want to address this because I see Athena said marketing, absolutely, and especially funnels and exposure. So I want you to know that your marketing and your funnels are not the same thing. And I know this may not be what Athena meant, but I just want to make sure for anyone else who is having this issue, um, your marketing and your client journey are not the same things, right? Or your funnel, right? Most of us, we learn the traditional language and it is funnel when they, you know, exchange their email address for something that you're giving away for free um, to join your email listing. They then, they're then entered into a sales funnel. And so this is a terminology that we hear all the time in the industry. And a lot of us get, you know, all tangled, and twist it in what that looks like. One of the things that we do over at Chase Gray University is we help our clients design a masterclass. What I've learned is that face forward teaching, it draws the client, it draws the client up easier or better or, or quicker right? Because when a person can connect with you and they feel like they know you, they feel like you're talking to them. They feel like, you know, you guys have a relationship, whether or not it's virtual um, or, you know, via email or inbox or whatever the case may be. When a person feels that they're connected to you, it's an easier conversion, right? It's an easier conversion. And so, one of the things that we help our clients do at CGU is build out a masterclass so that you have not only an opportunity to engage your client, but now you have what we call a lead magnet. A lead magnet is when you do what? Exchange information for a freebie, right? And so that's one of the ways you get people into the client journey or the sales funnel is you exchange something. So whether or not it's a PDF, whether or not it's your book, we have a coach here, um, Coach Sandra. She's our forgiveness coach here at Chase Gray University. She's also our um, client engagement manager. So if you ever see her on your post, we did send her. <laughs> so if, if you wonder who sent you, do know that we did send her, right? Um, uh, Sandra Cobb is Chase Gray University's client engagement manager. And so she's doing a masterclass on um, forgiveness. And so her masterclass, what she's doing is if you purchase her book, it gives you access to the masterclass. So she's using the book as the lead magnet, right? This is how she's entering her clients into her sales funnel, her funnel, her client um, journey or whatever term you use for getting them in front of the service or the solution right? So your messaging and your marketing, you're talking about the solution. You're talking about how you can serve. You're talking about what this, this problem is doing in the life of the client. And then as they enter into the um, sales funnel, now what's happening is you're nurturing that lead and you're showing them ways that this problem is causing havoc in their life. And you're showing them ways that you can solve this problem. And you're showing them ways how this solution can change the trajectory of their life. You know, this is what you're doing in that, that nurturing sequence. And that's that email sequence. So once someone enters into your sales funnel, what's next? 
So we the, the coaches are um, shown how to set up their automations once they've made that exchange to get them into their offer or their program. So I just wanted to share that because I know that, again, Coach Athena talked about marketing and then she said, especially funnels and exposure. And so I just wanted to make sure you knew that the marketing piece is to get them into the sales funnel. And then the sales funnel is a totally different um, component. Cool. So we're talking about marketing today, though. And I wanted to talk about your message. And my question to you is, is your message clear to your specific ideal client? Y'all know I had to pull out um, my balance book. Um, this is a book that we offer our coaches um, once they complete a certain level of the program. The balance book is Balance Your Faith, Balance Your Business. This is one of my favorite books, y'all. It's a notebook. It's a journal, um, but it's one of my favorite books. Um, and it's and it's about it's about field, and I just got it. So we're talking about today, though specifically, we're talking about marketing, and we're talking about does your client, does your specific ideal client, do they know um, your message? Like, are is it clear? Right. So I want to share with you today um, three ways to create a clear message three ways to create a clear message. So I want you guys to write this down because you already know for number one, I am very big on um, making sure y'all do homework. So y'all gonna have homework. I need everybody going live in the group this week. I need everyone going live in the group this week. So make sure you go ahead and uh, set your calendar on which day you gonna do it. But I want everybody going live in the group this week. And these are the three areas that I want you to talk about. And, it, and it's going to be 60 seconds or less. So don't think you're going to jump on in this community and be talking to us for 30 minutes. It's going to be 60 seconds or less. But here's your homework. Um, we're going to talk about marketing, right? And making sure that your message is clear, specific, and simple. Here's what we tend to do a lot of the time. A lot of the time we will, um, a lot of the times we'll have a message in our heart and in our thoughts. And to us, it's crystal clear. We're like, I don't understand what you mean. The client don't understand. And, and again, I want you to remember that when I, when I teach, I'm teaching from a place of experience, right? I don't teach I do learn. I do educate myself. I do take the time to study, to show myself, to show thyself approved, to show myself approved. But I also teach from a place of experience and some things that God has allowed me to experience to be before you. I was just on a coaching call on our team meeting. Our um, We have a mastermind call on Mondays. And so I'm, I was a part of the, on the mastermind call and I was working with one of um, the coaches and, you know, telling them some stuff to do, some things to implement. And I'm like, man, why didn't anybody tell me this stuff when I first started coaching? And they like, duh, isn't this the reason why you started this? I'm like, oh yeah, because I didn't have anybody to do this with me. Um, but I'm, I'm saying that to say that once, when we start positioning ourselves as the expert in something, we'll start using language and verbiage, assuming that the client will understand what we're talking about. And it's because we're speaking from a place of heal. We're speaking from a space of arrival. We're speaking from a from the other side of through, right? And so in our head, for number one, we'd be way too deep. This, this is like really starting to like frustrate me because we want these intellectually profound statements to make it sound like that I'm going to transfer, transform your soul. And it doesn't require all of that. And because you're so deep, you're so deep that the client doesn't understand what you're talking about. And again, I'm saying this because I was her, she was me. I was in this space where when I was creating my niche statement, I saw someone um, talk, call it their value statement, their power statement. When we're creating this message, we try to be so deep. I'm here to transform and empower the lives of women so that they can live out into the world and become the greatest version of what God called them. Like what? That's way too much. You're being way too deep. You're trying to say way too much in a sentence that's supposed to be simple, specific, and clear. And again, I am telling you this because I was her. 
I felt that I needed to make this prolific statement to make it sound like I was doing more than what was required. And the reason of this, let me tell you why we do this, is because a lot of us are still struggling with validation. And so what we're doing is, is we're creating these long, deep sounding statements so that it sounds like we know what we're talking about, but it really doesn't require that. Okay. It really doesn't. And so at the six figure shift conference, um, this is going to be an area that I'm going to focus in and we're going to go through some, some deeper layers, right? I'm going to talk about, you know, why is it that we feel like we have to teach or speak from this space? Why is it when I sit down with a client or with a coach and I say, okay, what's your message? You guys have to give me 13 different adjectives. You have to give 13 different layers of transformation and inner healing and deliverance. And you're layering these things to make it sound like this grand gesture because in our mind, we're, we're still fighting the validation piece and we're still fighting whether or not this is going to be received by our audience. So we want to layer it up to make it sound good when it really doesn't require all of that right? When we talk about niche coaching, we're talking about solving a specific problem. So if we're going to solve a specific problem, then we're going to have to do what? Be specific, right? Be clear, be simple, right? And so as we break down um, what the what specific means and how do we uh, reach that place in our messaging, then it's going to become more and more clear for you. Not only is it going to give you massive clarity, but it's going to give you massive clarity for the client and it's going to help you with your marketing. So for those of you who, you know, you're still in that place where you're trying to figure out if you should join us for the Six Figure Shift Conference, it's a live coaching event. So this is for the coach who's ready to truly transition. And you're like, look, I need hands-on support in this area. Cool. So we're talking about marketing. And the question is, does your is your messaging clear to your client? So let's go ahead and work through the top three areas that you need to gain clarity in so that you are um so that you are creating clear marketing right because again your message is your marketing your messaging is your marketing and so if the message is not clear then you're wasting marketing dollars and so for those of you you're like Latoya, i'm not paying for marketing i'm not talking about the facebook ads and the instagram ads and the google ads no you may not be physically exchanging time uh, money for the for the the platform but you're exchanging time and time cost just is, is more valuable than than money itself because money you can get back time you can't so if you're spending countless hours of time trying to speak to an audience that for number one you're not crystal clear of who you're talking to and for number two your messaging is so diluted and 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 deep words and phrases that you can't even get to the person that you're supposed to to serve then you'll constantly find yourself on that on that hamster wheel right so let's go ahead and talk about those three areas number one when you're talking about the message you want to identify the need what does your client need in this moment now once again don't be deep about it don't be deep about it like don't be deep about what the like what do they need specifically right what does your client need from you right in this moment what do they need from you what is it that your client need that's number one number two once you've identified what they need and again one just one thing don't say my client need they need uh healing and transformation because they in their life so that they get none of that don't i don't even want something as vague as they need healing because again healing is the result or or let me let me say it this way a person yes we know that a person needs healing but the healing is the process right 
the healing, the, the need is what, what do they need so that they can get whatever they want? The healing portion is the process. We know that they need the process, but what is it that they, that they need? So we have Athena. Um, Athena says she's a mindset transformation coach. As a mindset transformation coach, what um, what is it that your client needs from you? Right. What is it? What is it they're sitting right now as a mindset coach? What is it that they're sitting and saying, I need this? And be clear about it. Be specific about it, right? Again, <laughs> one of the young ladies over on Clubhouse, she had me cracking up laughing this morning. She said, you don't be so deep, right? We were talking about, you know, um, no, she said, don't get stuck in the deep. That's what she said. I was talking about not being so deep because we do this, especially as kingdom coaches. We can't help it. We have like this, this internal desire to just uh, talk in the thous and the these and the be this, this, this uh, transformational coach. But it, you can be those things inside of the process, not in the marketing piece. Because in the marketing piece is where we're doing what? We're speaking directly to the client. So when you identify the need of the client, this is where you're able to show the relatability, right? The need of the client for Chase Gray University is clarity. The client needs clarity. It, it, you're in a place where you're like, I know I've been called to coach. I know that I can make money from coaching, but I am confused. And I don't know how to not only create or craft a message that's going to speak to my specific ideal client, but I don't know how to craft a message that is niche specific. So the need of the client for Chase Gray University is clarity. Right? Yes, Brittany, come back. Uh, come back. Right? It's clarity. No, I'm sorry, Melissa. That's Melissa who says she needs to rewatch it. Come back, Melissa, and watch. Um, right? So the first thing is clarity. You need to make sure um that your the need of the client is clear and so here's the thing here's something that I, I want you to man i really need you to understand how serious this is because we do this when we talk about the need we start talking about internal stuff right and and so we'll we'll overwhelm you know they need boundaries and breakthrough and they need you know you will start using these terms that are still vague can you give me a clear need that your client has where when you say it they will automatically connect to it right and again i'm saying this because one of the things that i needed was clarity in my assignment. I knew my assignment. Like I didn't need anybody to tell me what my assignment was because I knew that part. I knew that I was a vision coach, right? I knew that. The problem was I didn't know how to articulate it so that it made sense. Shoot, not just to the client, but to me as well, but where I was able to create a message that spoke directly to that need. I didn't know how to do that. Right. And so a lot of times you'll see um, where you'll start creating your marketing. And because you haven't identified the need, you're only focusing on the results. You're like, this is what I can help you do. This is what I can help you do. This is what I can help you do. This is what's going to happen. But they first need to identify why they need this. Why do you need to be clear in your messaging? Because first of all, your coaching business is, isn't about you. It's about the people that you're called to serve. So without clarity, then number one, there's no confidence because what you'll notice is that the more clear someone is in what they do, the more confident they are. The more confident they are, the more that they show up, which creates consistency. The more that they show up in their consistency creates community. And then once they start gathering community, which is our um our target audience, now we're able to create currency where we're now speaking to the specific ideal client. Well, if you've noticed, there's layers to that, right? And so if you're wondering, you know, why do the client need clarity? Because without clarity, there is no, uh, there is no invite for the client. How does the, how will the client know that they need you if you're not clear 
on how you can serve them. If you're not clear on what they need from you. Here's the thing. We hear this all the time. Give the client what they want. Tell them what they, what is it? Give them what they want while working on what they need. Right? So when you think about the need, I want you to think about the want. Right? So they want this right? This is what they want. So in order to get this, this is what they're going to need. They're going to need what? What is it they're going to need? Because then we're going to talk about step number two, which is what? The goal, right? What is the goal? So we've identified the need. We've identified the need. Now we need to identify the goal. So they've identified the need, which is clarity, right? What is their goal? The goal, once the once the coach that, that enrolls into Chase Gray University, once they have that need and they know that they need clarity, their goal is to do what? Build a business. So I want clients. That's my goal. My goal is to get clarity so that I can get the client. Right? That's the goal. Well, the more clear you are, the more you show up as the expert, the more you show up with clarity in your message and in your marketing, then now you're able to reach the goal, right? Now we're now we're working towards the goal. Your clarity is what helps you get more clients. Why? Because the more clear you are. And so a lot of times we'll get stuck in the wanting to serve all, help all, right? There was a young lady and I, and I can use her because she's in the group now. Um, she was over on Clubhouse with me this morning and she was, she's a finance coach. I think, I believe her name was Erica. Um, she's the Ev uh, money elevation strategist. And she was talking about how when she um, first started, you know, she didn't know if she wanted to work with personal finances or entrepreneurship and their finances. And it was like, but I can do both. Right. And and most definitely she can. She's a money coach. Right. She can do both. Well, the problem is, is those are two different messages. They're two different messages. And so when you are trying to talk to somebody in their personal finances and you're talking to an entrepreneur and their finances, those messages are not the same. So you struggle. Right. You fall short. You're like, why are not hitting the mark? And it's because their needs are different. The need is different. So what we'll do is, is we'll create this broad need so that we think we're talking to them all collectively. But now we're not talking to anybody because now it's, it's going over their head. It's too broad. It's too broad. Let me know in the comments if this is making sense to you guys. I want to know. Let me know in the comments if this is making um, sense to you guys. Let me know. Let me know. Sweet, 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 sweet. Right. So we're talking about the importance of your messaging being clear. So back to the, the, the coach. I want to use her as an example. So she said, you know what? I need to figure out how to niche down in my business so that my messaging isn't so broad that it's not reaching anybody, right? So that it's not reaching anybody. So what we'll do is, is like I said, using her as an example, she's like, well, I can help people in their personal finances. I can help entrepreneurs in their business finances. Oh, but I just want to do both because I'm good at doing both. But what happens when you try to do both is now you're trying to market to two different people because the person that needs work with their personal finances is not always an entrepreneur. And the entrepreneur may not necessarily need work with it. They may not know they need work with their personal finances. If an entrepreneur needs help with their business finances, nine times out of 10, they need help with their personal finances as well. But they're not looking at it that way. You see what I'm saying? They're not looking at it that way. They're saying, oh my gosh, I'm a, a business owner now. I'm an entrepreneur right now. I need somebody to help me manage my business finances. When if you had the if you had great stewardship over your personal finances, you wouldn't need help over your business. But you only thinking about business because for whatever reason that becomes president over our personal, right? So there's no way that I can market personal finances to an entrepreneur and it makes sense to them. Right. And so this is why it's important for you to understand 
the need and the goal and to niche down and figure out who am I talking to and be specific because when you start getting clarity in the message, again, it becomes difficult when you're trying to do what? Serve and talk to everyone. Now, okay, me for an example, I'm, I'm going to use Latoya because I'm not going to get mad at myself. So I've always been a vision coach, right? Um, sometimes I do get mad at myself. Like, girl, you didn't have to say all of that, but I digress. That was funny. That was my own moment. Okay. So anyway, so what I used to do is I would, um, as a vision coach, I used to work with both service-based and product-based entrepreneurs, right? Let me tell y'all, I used to do 501c3s. I used to do business plans. I used to do grant writing. I used to do LLCs. I used to do the um, business formation, the EINs, the DUNS number, all of that good stuff, right? Trademarks, all of that. Um, and so again, me piling on all of these services, trying to validate the, the investment, trying to validate the cost I was because I struggled with exchanging profit for transformation. Um, and so I felt like that in order for someone to give me something physically, I needed to give them something physically. And I really didn't understand the concept behind coaching and how valuable it was. Right. So this is in my struggle time. So I was working with both service-based and product-based entrepreneurs. I found myself a lot of times mixing up and changing the message based on who I was talking to um, because, again, the message wasn't clear and across the board because I was trying to speak to different people. So the messaging behind the service-based entrepreneur may not be the same as a product-based entrepreneur. And so for those of you who are in that space where you're like, you know, I don't, I, I work with entrepreneurs you still want to know what type of entrepreneur you're working with because we're not all created equal. We're not all the same. Are you talking to a full-time entrepreneur? Are you talking to a dualpreneur? Like, who are you talking to? A dualpreneur is someone who works a nine to five in their business. Again, who are you talking to as the entrepreneur? So what I would do was, is I'm talking to service-based entrepreneurs and I'm talking to, um, I'm talking to uh, product-based entrepreneurs. And while at that time, the, it, the need was still clarity, but clarity in what? You, you see what I'm saying? Clarity in what? They, they were unable to um, really grasp what I had because, again, I'm, I'm, I'm providing clarity to you, but I'm not specific in what I'm offering clarity in. Right. And so because I, I'm not specific on what I'm offering clarity in now, it's just like I, I'm fine. I don't need clarity. I, I understand my assignment. Right. Oh, thank you. Who said that? Because your name now turned up. Oh, thank you, Brandy. Right. So because I'm saying I work with service based entrepreneurs, I work with product based entrepreneurs. I'm still a vision coach. Right. So I'm still offering clarity. Even at that time, I wasn't even saying clarity. How simple is the word clarity? As a vision coach, I offer clarity, period, <laughs> right? Like, that's it. I offer clarity for Christian coaches now. But at that time, even that wasn't clear. It was, um, I don't even know what I used to say. Like, as a vision coach, I can help you see bigger and greater in your business. What does that mean? What are you talking about, Latoya? It, it sounds good, though, doesn't it? I can help you see bigger and greater. I can help you see beyond what you're working on. That's not enough. That's not clear enough to help to, for me to pay you four figures. Now, don't get me wrong. I was still getting clients and that was only by the grace of God. You better believe it. That was only because God called me to this thing. Right. But in actuality, it wasn't working because that's not clear. <laughs> right. That That's not clear. I can help you see bigger and greater in your business. Like, like I can see big. I see enough. Right. But the moment that God said, no, Latoya, as a vision coach, I'm, you are going to help provide clarity. Then that's when it switched. Right. So now the need. Now the need is more specific because not only am I clear on who I'm talking to, but now I'm clear on what I'm adding, what I'm giving, the need that I'm that I'm, I'm addressing. Right. So remember, we talked we we're talking about those three ways to create your clear message right what are the three ways to create your clear message that's what we're talking about today here are three ways to create a clear message number one we talked about the need number two we talked about the what did we talk about for number two number two was get it out get it out get it out get it out the goal what is the goal 
right? Again, when I was working with service-based and entrepreneur, service-based and business, service-based and product-based entrepreneurs, the goal was just to grow the business, right? Now the goal is to generate income from your coaching business. That's your goal. How many is that? Is that everybody's goal here? Let me know if that's your goal. Let me know if that's your goal. If your goal is to generate income from your coaching gift, let me know in the comments. I want to know. Just throw an emoji out. Put an emoji in the comments if that's your goal, right? So the need is clarity. The goal is um, clients, pay clients for your coaching gift. And then what are the results? What's the transformation? That's step number three. You want to identify the transformation. What is um, gaining clarity, generating clients, paid clients? What is that going to do for you? What's the transformation? Okay, I see the emojis coming. Right? What is that going to do for you? It's going to do a multitude of things, right? For those of you who want to transition into full time entrepreneurship, is going to create the way for you to do that. For those of you who want to um, create high impact and high income, it's going to give you the opportunity to do that. For those of you who want to spend more time with your family and less time in the business, it's going to give you the opportunity to do that. For those of you who want to be seen as national or international speakers, it's going to give you the opportunity to do that. For those of you who want to be established as the expert and you want to be paid four and five figures for your coaching is going to provide you the opportunity to do that. For those of you who want to scale, right, you want to scale your business. Let me talk about what scaling is real quick for those of you who don't know, because I didn't know what it was for a long time. And I used to hear people talk about it all the time, like I can help you scale your business. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And I'm like, but I really don't know what that means. <laughs> so when we talk about scaling, we're talking about growing the business at a consistency that it doesn't require your intentional efforts or work on every step of the way. So this is when we talk about the uh, automations and the evergreen content and the uh, sales funnels that we talk talked about at the beginning of the um, of the masterclass, when all of these things are working simultaneously, then this is when you're able to scale because now you're able to grow that doesn't require the hands on of you at every intricate uh, growth spurt at every milestone, right? So right now, Chase Gray University, we're scaling. So we've hit, we've grown to six figures because we understand the concept. We understand, you know, what it requires. Now we're scaling to 3.3 million, right? And so when we talk about scaling is now we're on that, that uh, incline of growth. So the automations are in place. The systems are in place. The SOPs are in place. You know, all of the intricate details of a business are in place. So now we can scale. So now when the marketing ad goes out, it's a process that happens. And guess what, y'all? Your girl not in off all, all those moving pieces. Bless the heavenly of the father. Like, Lord, have mercy. I'm not, I'm not a part of all of those moving pieces anymore, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I still got work to do. Because I still have my hands in, in, in pots that they shouldn't be in. And I, I be getting fussed at, but I can't help it sometimes. So I be messing up. <laughs> but it's okay because the, the systems are in place, right? And so now we're talking about, so when we talk about why, and again, we we're we going to go all the way back to the original need, which was what? Clarity. Because if you're talking about scaling, here's the thing. My, my goal is to do what? is to build business owners, right? I talk about freelancers, I talk about entrepreneurs, and I talk about business owners. Those are three different people, three different people, three different roles, right? Everybody think it's like the coolest thing in the world to go file your LLC. I filed my LLC. I'm good. I'm a business owner. I got mine, right? <laughs> All of that. Cool. But it's a whole nother ball game when you pan a tax bill, okay, that is a quarter of a salary, 
Okay, let me tell you, it it ain't it ain't everything that glitter ain't gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I was excited about being the freelancer, exchanging my time for money. Because this is the place where I learned that I had some something valuable to offer. So let's not let's not um uh um uh, discredit the freelancer, right? The 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 solopreneur, the proprietary uh filing and we talk about all that stuff in C cgu because we don't want you to be those things but we're not going to de demise the the small beginnings because i was hurt right and so this was the freelancer when i was like oh it costs 150 dollars an hour to work with me and i thought that was a big deal <laughs> <laughs> right. And so then I started making the hundred and fifty dollars an hour. But then I started to notice that the value that I added the client took longer than an hour. So then now I'm shortening myself because I'm on a call with you, which is only supposed to be 60 minutes. But yet it's taking me about 90 minutes to two hours. And that's crunching it to make sure that you're reaching the results. And so now my hundred and fifty dollars an hour turned into seventy five dollars an hour. So now I'm unable to serve more clients in a day because not only have I a uh, shortcut my pricing, but I'm I'm scheduling you by the hour. So instead of me being able to take four clients a day, I'm only able to take two clients a day at $75 an hour. Now I'm not making the money, right? We're talking about that freelance entrepreneur, that freelancer. And a lot of us start there. I started there. It's okay, right? And so this is why we started. This is why Chase Great University is, is what we do. This is why we're, you know, we're de demonstrating the kingdom coaching standard so that you don't have to start there. Because when you start there, it takes a little bit more for you to climb up that ladder and it can be frustrating. It can be overwhelming. It's just a lot that, that comes with starting there, right? So what we want to do is we want to help you start the six figure business. So if you've noticed, you see start the six figures a lot in our language because we want you to start the six figure business. We don't want you to, you know, have to go through some of those layers and challenges that I went through. We want you to start the business start as a six-figure business like let's go ahead and do it right so why am i sharing this with you i'm saying these things to you because again if you're looking to scale we're talking about the business the um business owner we talked about the freelancer right um we're talking about the freelancer then we talked about the uh entrepreneur the self-employed entrepreneur now once you get to that space you you feel good you like listen i'm self-employed i'm a entrepreneur i'm making money this is a good thing this is a good place to be in but here's the problem all you've done is created another job for yourself right all you've done was created another job for yourself sorry about that right and so when you're a, an entrepreneur what you've done is you've created your pricing you've created your structure where you're now taking the money and you're able to put it into your pocket or maybe pay a bill or so forth and so forth but what happens is, is you kind of get stuck there and then you create a job for yourself right a lot of us stay there for a minute we say that I stayed there for for quite some time where I was doing everything in the business for I was doing everything. I was my own social media manager. I was my own executive assistant. I was my own coach. I was coaching other people. I was my own marketing team. I was my own design team. Like I was doing everything. Now, don't get me wrong. I did freelance. So I would like go on to Fiverr and get people to come do projects with me. I will hire certain people to come in and do projects for me. You know, I worked as that that full time entrepreneur for a very long time and it sustained does but the problem was is that i was creating a job for myself and so when i wasn't at work there wasn't work to being done right there weren't clients coming in because i was i wasn't at work i needed a break i needed to take tuesday off to take my kids to the doctor but when i took that tuesday off yes yeah, stuff was getting posted but i wasn't getting any clients because i was doing everything myself right and so then now you have the business owner. And this is why we encourage our clients here at Chase Gray University to establish your prices at a four-figure price point. Not just so that you can put that money in your pocket, but so that you can create the room to grow the business. If you're charging your client $297, which is nothing wrong with that price point, if you're a freelancer, 
may be an entre a self-employed entrepreneur, but if you're charging your client $297, there's no margin there to pay the taxes, to pay the overhead. Think about your, your subscriptions. What stuff are you subscribed to to grow your business? And I'm going all the way down the left lane that I'm not supposed to be in. But I'm wanting you to think about these things because we're talking about messaging. <laughs> and we're talking about marketing. And, and the reason why we got here is because of those three components that we talked about, the, the need, the goal, and the transformation. And the more clear you become in those three areas, this is where you're able to create the uh the systems so that you can scale so that you can go from a freelancer to a business owner those are not the same right business ownership uh entrepreneur and then business owner i'm sorry, freelancer entrepreneur then business owner here at chase great university we want to help you become a business owner so we want you to create the margin so that you can do what so that you can grow the business we're kingdom coaches we, we don't have to do this as a hobby. We don't have to do this part time. Like this is something that we can literally commit to and do full time and generate the income that you desire. Cool. So listen, I just wanted to jump on and share with you um, those three major areas. These three areas we're going to take a deeper dive into during the Six Figure Shift Conference. We're going to take a deeper dive into these three areas during the Six Figure Shift Conference, May 12th through the 14th. I encourage you, if you have not already purchased your ticket to do so, join us for this live coaching experience. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions whether or not it'll be virtual. It will not be virtual. Um, and the reason is because we're always virtual. Everything I do with you guys is virtual. Chase Gray University is virtual. I want us to be in the same space. I want to be hands on with you. I can't hands on coach with you over um, the way that I want to, the way that this, this experience is going to allow us to through a screen. Um, one of the exercises that we are uh, launching during the, the conference, it, it won't work virtually. It, it won't work. You have to be in, in person. You have to be in the presence of. And so that is why um, the conference will not be made available virtual. Will it be virtual in 2023? I don't know. We got to wait till that time to see if that's something that God um, wants us to do. Yes, 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 Brandy. I love it. I love it. You did. Brandy, I think you came to like, like one of our first, maybe second shift conferences. Oh man, you're right. You're right. That was awesome. I just had a moment. Yeah, Brandy was at one of maybe the first or second conference that we had. I love that. Thank you so much for that, Brandy. I'm glad that you shared that. So listen, we're all set. Make sure you click the link in the caption. Um, secure your seat. We are less than 30 days away. Oh my God. My team has been like, um, excuse me, we're, we're planning a conference right now. Um, so I'm excited about it, but we are less than 30 days away from the conference. Again, it's May 12th through the 14th. We'll be um, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So go ahead, get your, secure your seat, um, book your flight, hurry up because we wait until the last minute um, and then get your, reserve your room at the hotel. And let's turn this three-day experience into your six-figure uh, journey. Listen, we're creating six-figure roadmaps this year. Um, they're personalized roadmaps. They're customized roadmaps. And we can only do this with you in person. So make sure you secure your seat so that we can take a deeper dive into this messaging piece. You can get hands-on clarity on the need, the goal, the transformation, so that you can increase your marketing right? So that you can massively increase your marketing. You can magnify your messaging so that you can grow your business. You can get your clients, you can enroll your clients, and then you can start scaling your business. Cool. Have a fantastic Monday. Um, don't forget to sit down and write out, maximize your Monday, write your goals out for the week, your faith confession, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you guys inside of the community. Have a fantastic Monday and be blessed.